Hey guys, in this video I'm talking all about my experience getting a home sleep test, being diagnosed with sleep apnea, and getting a night guard for treatment. I have struggled with chronic fatigue for about half of my life, and I just now was diagnosed with sleep apnea, and I've been treating it with a night guard, and I have seen a lot of relief. Now, I'm not completely cured of my chronic fatigue. I think I'm still definitely more tired than the average person but I've noticed a huge improvement with my diagnosis and treatment, and I wanna talk about my experience in case it helps others. I think my chronic fatigue really started halfway through high school, maybe around 15 or 16, and I would notice when I would wake up, I was just not refreshed. I just felt like I was hit with a load of bricks. It was so hard to get up in the morning and to get moving. And it felt like much more than the average person. You know, a lot of teenagers don't like the morning, but I felt like I was just dragging more than average. And also every day on the weekends that I could, I would take a nap in the summers. I would take a nap in the afternoon every day that I could. On days where I could take a nap, I felt like I could actually complete my day and be semi-functional to like a normal time to go to bed at eight or nine o'clock. On days like school days where I didn't nap, I was absolutely dying by like six, seven, eight o'clock. I would want to go to bed at eight o'clock, which I think is not normal for like a 16 year old. Some days I would come home and want to go to bed like right away, like like five or six and I got a little pushback from that because you know that's not very socially acceptable but I was just so tired and it was more than the average person in college um, I didn't feel like it was interrupting my life as much because although I did go to classes and work in college I pretty much always could take a nap in college, I would have like morning classes, take a nap, go to my nanny job or whatever. So in college, I felt like I was semi-functional, but then after college when you know I had jobs and I wasn't able to nap all day, I would wake up you know, dying from fatigue and then try to have like three cups of coffee during the day to get me through my work day and then just like crash after work. And then on the weekends, every day that I could, I would take a nap and I was semi-functional, but I mean, I was allowing like nine hours of sleep at night so in theory I should have been good but instead I was just like dying from fatigue all day in my mid-20s we did find that my injection fraction of my heart was a little low so I do have mild heart failure which is something that runs in my family so we started treating me for that which some of the chronic fatigue issues I have I did um, just kind of chuck up to that so I was like oh that must be what's going on um, and then I had two babies. So I had pregnancies and postpartum and those were just so hard. One, I had extreme morning sickness during my pregnancies and the chronic fatigue on top of that, I just felt like I was a walking zombie all the time. And then after I had my babies, I was just barely functional because I was up breastfeeding them multiple times a night and I just felt like I was an absolute zombie throughout the day. I would just sleep whenever I could when the baby would sleep, which is like in theory because you know babies like to be held and you can't sleep while you're holding them and so I was paranoid. Sometimes I would just cry. I was so tired and it was really hard emotionally. I got pregnant again when my first was about 18 months and that pregnancy was just so hard because I also had a toddler and I was working and then I had a newborn and a toddler and then I had to go back to work at three months. It was just hard. It was a really hard period of life. After I was done breastfeeding my youngest, I actually did a GLP-1 therapy to help me lose the weight. My BMI was about 27, I was overweight and so I decided to do a weight loss program. And the GLP-1 went really well. I did have some like nausea and stuff, but overall, like I lost the weight and I ended up getting off of it and I have been maintaining the weight loss. But I noticed once I got off of my GLP-1 after about a month, I was waking up feeling so tired still. And I didn't totally realize, but while I was on my GLP-1, I think my sleep was better and GLP-1s can help with sleep apnea. And I knew that, and I'd always kind of in the back of my head wondered if I had sleep apnea, because I had a few roommates in college be like, you gasp for air in the middle of the night. So no one's ever told me that I snore, but I have had a few people be like, you gasp for air, like go like, <sighs> like in the middle of the night, so like stop breathing, I guess. And so I had wondered if sleep apnea was part 
of my chronic fatigue issues, but I had never really pursued it because when I was in my childbearing phase, I thought that that's kind of what was going on. Before that, I thought maybe it was based off my heart issue. But after the GLP-1 therapy, where I saw kind of an improvement while I was on that, and then kind of it go back to being like more of a problem off of it, I was like, oh, I think I really want to pursue this. So I actually just reached out to my primary care. I sent her a portal message and asked if I could be prescribed a sleep test. So I thought I would probably like go into the hospital and do a sleep test, but she actually just ended up ordering a home sleep test, which at my local hospital, they have a sleep lab and they just called me and scheduled me to come in and they gave me this kit. And I actually get to keep it, which I'm not going to use it again or anything. Um, and the sleep lab tech just kind of told me how to do it. You download an app on your phone. You wear this on your wrist and this on your finger. And this had a sticky and I put this on my chest. And I hooked it all up with the app and slept with this overnight. And it really didn't disturb my sleep or anything. I'm someone that like rolls around a lot while I'm sleeping or anything. And I feel like I got a pretty average night's sleep wearing all this. So it really didn't interrupt me much. And it was nice I could just do it at home because when you have little kids, it's really nice when you can just do it at home. And when I was done in the morning, I hit something on the app and it just kind of sent all my results. Not long after my primary care doctor's nurse called me and said, yes, you were diagnosed with, I think it was mild to moderate sleep apnea. Your treatment options are just watching it, getting a mouth guard or even a CPAP. Now, I really wanted to try the night guard first because the CPAP is just like a lot more invasive. You have to wear like the whole machine. I'm someone that kind of likes to toss and turn and roll around. And so that would kind of interrupt my sleep a lot. So I was curious if a night guard would work. So what sleep apnea is, is a condition where you get really shallow breaths or you actually stop breathing during your sleep. And obviously this can lead to really crummy sleep and lots of fatigue. And I'm someone, I didn't wake up thinking, oh, I stopped breathing and woke up 10 times last night. I wasn't really aware of that, but that is an explanation to why I would sleep, sleep nine hours straight-ish and wake up exhausted and be exhausted the whole next day. Sleep apnea is commonly found with people with obesity, large tonsils, or when people have a dramatic change in hormone levels. So I do have large tonsils and I have had dramatic changes in hormone levels. I've had babies. I've had issues with cycle regulation in the past. And so the hormone levels and the large tonsils definitely fit me. Night guards are able to treat sleep apnea because they are able to open up your airway. So you're gonna stop having that shallow breathing and hopefully the stop breathing as much. And they kind of adjust your jaw and your tongue which I'm gonna show you the difference between my jaw when I don't have it on and when I have it on. So right now I don't have it on. And then let me put it in. So my jaw is just noticeably different when I have it on. It's totally opens everything up. I actually got this night guard a couple months ago when I went to the dentist and they said that I was grinding my teeth and I was like, oh, I'll go ahead and get one of these because my dental insurance, I think covered half of it or something. And I was like, oh, that's probably a good idea to get anyway. So I had this ready to go. I got it at my dentist office and my dental insurance actually helped cover it. And I hadn't been using it yet because it was just, you know, really big. And I just, I don't know why I hadn't been using it. But after that diagnosis with sleep apnea, I was like, oh, I have a night guard. I need to be using this anyway. Really day one after using my night guard, I noticed a noticeable difference. So I had a little trouble falling asleep just because having that in my mouth was different. But once I was asleep, I slept, I mean, I slept good and I woke up feeling noticeably refreshed. I have been using it about every night since and I've noticed a huge difference, especially in the mornings. I feel a million times more refreshed in the mornings. My morning routine was like, I wake up, pull myself out of bed, have some coffee, feel better for like an hour, crash hard, try to like avoid having another cup of coffee till like the afternoon, feel better for like an hour, crash hard, or if I can like have an afternoon nap and then feel semi-functional until like 9ish PM and then crash hard. 
So my mornings feel a million times better. I still do feel so much better if I'm able to get an afternoon nap, but if I'm not, I'm more functional than I was. So I would say I'm still a more tired person than the average person. I'm still someone who feels so much better if I get an afternoon nap. And I do, I just limit them to an hour or if I'm, if I'm crunching on time, 20 minutes, I just feel better if I can like lay down and I do fall asleep and when I take a nap. So I have noticed a big improvement with just the night guard, which I think for mild to moderate sleep apnea, this is a recommended good treatment. I'm not opposed to getting a CPAP someday. I just am someone that is such an active sleeper. I wonder if that would wake me up more than it would help me, but I'm not opposed to doing it someday. If you are someone that struggles with chronic fatigue or snoring, or you've been told you gas for air or have sleep apnea symptoms, I would totally recommend talking to your primary care doctor about getting a sleep study. They'll probably call it into a sleep lab. It's great that we have home sleep tests now and they might order a home sleep test or they might have you go into a lab. I think either could be beneficial. I'm really glad that I pursued this and found this out and now I'm having treatments. I think it's really been helping me. I'm I'm still a more tired person than average and I think some of that is maybe just me but some of that I think was the sleep apnea some of that I think is the heart issue and some of that is just I am a person that can really use a nap anyway I hope sharing my experience will help someone out there if you are experiencing something similar or have had a similar experience I'd love to hear about it in the comment section if you have any specific questions for me feel free to leave them in the comment section I love to chat with people please give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and I would love if you subscribe to my channel if you have not already